Hello guys, um, I'm just about to finish the Kung's Eleven, so I thought of doing a gear review quickly. And so, son of a <laughs> mosquitoes, man. Um, so we started 16th June, and for two weeks we didn't have mosquitoes. We just had snow, we had cold, and good weather mostly. And yeah, no mosquitoes. But yeah, lately there's there are a lot of them. And your conversation on the trail every time you meet a person is gonna be has a mosquito situation, are there many mosquitoes? But this is a gear review. This is my backpack. It's an Exped Lightning 60. Just to say that's a 45 liters version that saves you 100 grams a little bit more. Sometimes it's just not about carrying more. Man, I'm seeing the mosquitoes flying and so you buy the 60 liters not because you want to carry more but just because it makes your life easier everything fits there like more easily than in the 45 liters version so i would always recommend the 60 liters or a bigger backpack even if it has a slight weight penalty but then you know you your add-ons on the trail the things you get on the trail that you don't think of sometimes you buy bread and it's bulky like i have there it occupies space so you have your 60 liters and you don't have to do tetris like you know so that's that what i love about this backpack it's reliable it's very water repellent it won't take a full day of rain but that's why you have your dry bags and whatnot it has uh, these straps one and two they're independent so you, you can attach items to both independently and you can reach your bottle of water without taking off the backpack from here a bit of a ninja move but you manage and you do it very quickly and nicely two pockets in the heat belt here and there they're large and big enough and a bit just a slightly elastic you can adjust the, the pack on the back so this is important i put here my seat pad that i'm sitting on you can put it here it fits nicely you have also this strap on top to attach items like you take off your jacket you can put it over there and yeah i put my trekking poles here i'm uh, sorry my tent poles here usually i don't carry this tent but because of my wife i'm carrying this tent and uh, this is just trash so they're here uh what else yeah enough padding on the shoulder straps enough padding here is fantastic it's pretty thick i don't i don't think you get to see it but it's pretty thick it's an awesome backpack i love it and i strongly recommend this backpack then what we have in there so i have a puffy jacket here from columbia yeah, i'm super lazy so you really need to thank me for taking the thing off um, so it's this columbia thing and I used to, I had a wrap one, Microlight uh, Summit. This is a lot better because it's 100 grams uh, less. It's equally warm, if not warmer. Uh, it's very nice to the touch. The wrap one is very nice to the touch too. The wrap one looks pretty nice. Maybe this one looks equally nice. The hood is so much better in this jacket than the wrap one, just so much better. And this is another reason why I ditched the wrap one because I, I, I was just so fed up with it mega big hood that is designed to wear helmets check it out look come on really this is a very nice jacket that i had there hanging out at home not doing anything brought it on the trail i'm super happy i did because it did the job so well and 100 grams less 100 grams man when you can 100 grams on your puffy jacket you know you you you, you should be very happy about it and I had this dry bag hanging around at home, so I pack it here. It's very heavy for what it is, 45 grams. But this is one of those that are really water resistant, almost waterproof fully. Then we have this uh, pot, cozy, cozy pot that my wife did for the, for the pot. So she dehydrates uh, our food at home. She has a dehydrating machine and so um, when we add the water to the food, we put it in the cold fossil, what's left of it. So um, generally, die sucker. Generally, uh, man, it's like a circle. It's just uh, broke it, so it goes like a circle around the thing. I'll put a picture, you know, and you know what it is. This is the tent, MSR access to. 
Uh, I've, proved, um, I've tested this tent before in Scotland while doing the Scottish National Trail, the Cape Wrath Trail, and the Southern Upland Way. That, that was beginning of March, so I got a lot of bad weather. The Scottish National Trail also got bad weather. Because I got a lot of bad weather. The Scottish National Trail also got bad weather because I did it at the end of September, uh, mid-October, I think, 27 days. It's good. It takes all the rain in the world and it took it very well. It took strong winds as well. Uh, here in Ekunsleden, to be honest, I didn't have to test the tent because it hardly rained on us. And, uh, that were, just a couple of days of winds, there were moderate winds, nothing to worry really. But I know the tent works well. The floss is, it pitches inner first. So first you put your inner, then you put the rain fly on top. If it's pouring down, that's, uh, that's not ideal, but you can manage. If you carry the sponge that I always recommend everybody, you can dry the tent if it gets wet, so it's no big deal. This sponge is really good. You use it, like I've been using it a lot here because this hat situation is something new for me. I'm used to hiking in Scotland, there's no hats. You're lucky if you get a bothy. So here with all the hats, I could uh, take a shower and whatnot. So the sponge, just dry yourself. It does a good job and you don't need to carry a big towel. Of course, it's mostly for guys, dirty guys like me, I guess. Um, you know, I don't think girls like to dry themselves with a sponge, but it does the job, you know, so. And dry your tent, you know in the morning if it's been raining and then you have a silk nylon tent that absorbs more water than a uh, Cuban fiber. This is really good. The Cuban fiber also takes water but not as much as silk nylon. Um, so this is great for that. It's great to clean your dishes. Um, you can kill mosquitoes with a sponge. You know, multiple uses, 20 grams is the way to go, really. Oh, by the way, you see this uh, pocket of the backpack? You can access that from the outside, and then it, ha it has also this pocket in the inside for all the stuff. Um, so here, so far, I have a 25 grams pair of, pair of shorts. I only use this when I'm doing the laundry, and that's the only thing I can wear, my shorts, and everything else is in the laundry. 25 grams, and it gave me like cover, so I think it's a deal. I also have a strap for my camera case because when I put when I check in the backpack on the on the plane, I need a, a strap for my camera case that usually is attached here on the front. But this is for camera guys, so I won't get into that. The chest pod from home is fantastic. I recommend it to everybody. It has two separate pockets inside. It has an outside pocket. It has the zip for the inside here. So why this? Because you just add all this stuff you're going to be using throughout the day, so you don't have to take off the backpack, it's a pain, so you put it here. What do I carry here? I carry my knife, I carry this, the high, uh, hydrating tabs, because it's been super, super hot. I usually also carry, well, usually. Now I've been carrying sun, sunscreen, a small one I got here. I carry my neck gaiter, my hat, my gloves, um, energy bars if I have some, I, also my sound recorder is working now over there. Basically anything you're gonna use throughout the day, it's gonna be on and off and whatnot, you can put it here, it's really really great. What else? I didn't bring a water filter. Getting sick is more tedious than filtering water, trust me. My wife did, I told her not to, we never used it, she used it once, once. She didn't do, to be fair, Amarnas to Hemavan, which is like this section that people say, oh, um, you know, uh, you don't need it, really. But this one of these things that is up to your comfort level. I would say you don't need a water filter. If you feel more comfortable than my wife having one, then just by all means get it. She had it, she didn't use it only once, so I don't think it's worth walking the water filter since Abisco. Neo X Lite, what not? Uh, the first one I got lasted literally 12 nights, and my first through hike it failed and it got a bump. I got this as a replacement. This is a newer version, and it's going strong. And I've used it quite a bit so far, and all so far so good. 
I like over the previous version. Oh, man, sucker. Sorry, I just need to. Uh, man, I'll deal with them later. The bulb. The bulb. I mean, this is considered in reality. You see? It's the mosquito situation. It just sucks so bad. Trust me. The valve is a lot bigger. I thought it wasn't such a big deal, but it is actually because you can inflate this a lot faster than the the previous one. It really makes a difference. I thought it wasn't so such a difference. You can get used to the other one. I used the other one and I didn't die using it. But yeah, if you have to buy one, make sure it's the new one with the valve. I think it's new as, as of 2020. So anyway, but still the newer version. Uh -huh. Yeah, my gas canister here. I took the medium one, we finished it. My wife carried a smaller one as an emergency because we didn't want to run out of gas. So, and this is it. Let's go back in. Anyway, I have to rearrange this tomorrow. As you can see, uh, this is my bag for the tent. This is a normal bag. And what I do is I put my pegs inside the inner tent. I just fold the inner tent and then put the the pegs there also put my ground sheet I'll talk about it now so basically I put my stakes and then I just fold the tent with them inside in a little uh, bag and it does the job this is the first time I use this uh, ground sheet uh, this material that is oh my, oh, too far this material that you use for the windows here. That oh, this one I got it. Yeah. This material is used to insulate windows. So you can use it as a ground sheet. And it did the same job as my 230 grams ground sheet. This one is 77 grams. Same job. 77 grams because I strengthen it putting this uh, wrapping tape on the edges on both sides so this is the way to go it's fantastic especially if your tank has a bathtub already like a this one has I think it's 40 nears floor so you see not without the ground sheet but if you carry a thin one like this then you protect your tank your um, your tent so it's a good investment and it, it, it's worth in five euros so it's great um these trusty running shoes i did with these specific uh ones i've done almost half the scottish national trail the west holland ways and the african way the pennine way and now the kunstleden these five trails on this they're falling apart now but i want to make a video about them to show how they are and how awesome they are and I mean it's um, I'll show you later but so I have a manual focus so I won't show you but I'm basically you know like sliding everywhere because I don't have any grip at all this totally wasted out so but you know I'm going strong we're drawing here and um, I have my sun globes these are meant to be, it's outdoor research, sun globes are meant to be for the sun. But actually I used them for the midges in Scotland. They were great addition against the, the horrible midges. Of course, just don't go to Scotland in summer. Doesn't matter what your kid is, just don't go. But here it, it was good for the sun because we got a lot of sun. It was very intense. Did they protect me against the mosquitoes? No, they didn't. So unfortunately, but they, I mean, they didn't and they did. This is what happened. For the most part, mosquitoes will try to get to your skin. So whenever they could, they would bite my fingers, the top of my fingers. And sometimes they got me here too, but very rarely. So I, I actually think they're no mosquito bite repel, um, protector. They don't protect you from that, but they are more like uh, the deterrence. So the mosquitoes see them, uh, kind of avoid everywhere that's covered with the gloves. And, but they do go through them. Actually, they also go through my trousers. This has been a failure. These are a pair of wrap trousers. And they were great. They're great. I'm still really happy with them. They have elastic band on the hip and on the waist. Uh, so they're great in case you gain or lose weight on the trail. They get you covered. No matter. No matter what. 
um, the, the dry very fairly quickly, I would say very quickly actually, they're summer trousers. So in the snow sections in Abisca at the beginning, when your trousers are gonna get soaking wet, even in cold weather, they will still dry very fast, like very fast. But you know, overnight, they will be totally dry. It happened yesterday, I fell in the river, literally. So I was gonna do my sort of daily washing thing at night. I check a stone, rivers are tricky, and uh, I know I digress, but just quickly to say, I checked the stone there, it was solid. The moment I stepped on it, three seconds later after um, bending forward, I fell straight on the river. Moral of the story, if you're gonna do anything around a river, always check where you are and where you can come out before you get close to the river. It, I don't care if you're collecting water or washing yourself or washing your socks or doing these Hindu um, um, whatever rituals. Whatever you're doing, check, okay, where is my running in the river? These are my surroundings. If I were to fall, where should I escape? Here, there, escape routes. Here, there, where's the current goes? W the current going, where is it gonna take me? Can I get out over there? Yes, no, otherwise change, change the place. Why is this important? I think if you have hiked enough, probably if you hike in Scotland or anywhere with lots of rivers and you collect your water from the rivers, I'm totally sure you've had already your share of close calls falling into the river thing just by collecting water. Shit happens, guys. So be careful with the rivers. They're very tricky stuff and you need to be smarter than them or they'll get you. Going back to trousers, um, I fell in the river. They were soaking wet last night uh, up to the knees and bone dry this morning, so that's nice. Did they protect me against the mosquito bites? Not at all. The only thing that protected me is that they're not leggings. So whenever it's a bit loose, of course the mosquitoes can only reach so far. Even if they go through, they may not get to your skin. So, uh, pro tip, if you're gonna bring trousers, don't bring leggings, especially for the girls that usually they, they have leggings, like my wife. Leggings is the worst thing, unless it's super thick. It will be hot, but you prefer hot leggings that are mosquito bites all over the place, trust me. If I had known, I would have uh, brought my winter trousers. Yes, in the snow sections, they would have been soaking wet and they wouldn't have dried, period. But they would have protected me the rest of the hike uh, from the mosquitoes, so I think it's a good tra trade-off. Um, other than that, yeah, I really like these wrap trousers. And Whenever I can, I use them. I think they're 230 grams, so that's also good. This is a new addition to my kit. I don't know if you get to see it, but I'll put a picture or something. It's my mountain rain jacket. 118 grams, size large. Fantastic. I can only say good things about that jacket. Did it protect me from the rain when it was intense? Yes. Today I went up a glacier and back and trust me it was pulling down big time and the thing protected me well. Testing this jacket too, it served me very very well. I have a very good opinion about it so far and now I'm testing it with uh, intense rain. I don't know if you get to see it but it's pulling down, trust me. Was I pretty wet when I came back? Yes, why? Because I was running down from the glacier so you get wet inside out. Does this breathe well? Well, look, it is very waterproof, it's very windproof. We've had many days strong winds on the freaking face all day long. Incredible the amount of heat this thing can provide. Do you want it also to breathe well? It's waterproof, it's windproof, and you want it breathable. That's marketing uh, BS. In my experience, the jackets I've had, they all sooner or later get you damp if you're moving, and there's no escape from that. And if you want a truly breathable jacket, then good luck to you when it's pouring down on you, because then you know, you're gonna get soaking wet from the rain. So there's, there's gonna be a trade-off. You can have your cake and eat it. The only thing I haven't tested is pouring down continuous intense rain day after day which is a normal Scottish situation, or I would say here too. We've just been very lucky. I haven't tested the jacket in that scenario. But what I've discovered is, what is awesome about this jacket is it's so freaking thin, it's, it's not that thin actually, it's 20 derniers, pretty thin anyway, 
But the good thing about it, it dries in the blink of an eye. So you can be totally soaking wet, and really, you're, so, you're hiking, and before you realize, it's totally bone dry. Whereas my other jacket, the North Face, I, I've been using, it takes quite a long time because it's a lot thicker. And this thing, man, it dries off super quickly, and I think that's a plus, because it makes you feel like fresh and dry instead of damp when it's wet. Another thing, you know you sometimes go through quite dense vegetation in, in the Kunstleben. And the, I mean, as thin as it is the material, it took a lot of direct hits on it while going through the branches and whatnot. And it's still going strong. So, and I, I paid a hundred pounds. I think it's an awesome jacket. Again, the hat and the hoodie fits perfectly around your face. It offers awesome protection. You can still turn left and right your head and the, and the hoodie follows you. This is my water carrier from Evernew, two liters. I think it's 40 grams. I really like it. I met a German guy who told me that it sucks. He had the same one. It sucks to collect water. It's true, it sucks big time. So I just told him, I just refill it with my other bottle. This is a bottle from a smoothie. I always use it because, you know, it uh, has a large opening which makes your uh, water collecting easy. You can pee in the bottle because it has a large opening, so you won't pee everywhere, just inside the pocket. That's a good thing too. Some people find it very disgusting. I don't. I find it awesome that I don't have to go outside when it's infected by mosquitoes. And I'm a guy and I can pee in the bottle, you know? If you're a girl, it's a bit harder for you. I know they sell these devices to pee and all, but I'm not too sure if you like to use that, how effective it is. If I was a girl and it's infected by mosquitoes outside, I think I would pee in my pot, in my cooking pot, anywhere. I'm not going outside to pee, especially as a girl, and everything, you know, your trousers down and whatnot. To pee, man, when pee is like 90% plus water, you can drink it six times around. Seriously, I'm not going outside with a mosquito situation to pee. I pee anywhere. I pee in a dry bag. If I'm a girl, I pee in a dry bag. I pee anywhere, I'm not going outside. Your mileage may vary. This is my outdoor research drowning cap. I remove what is around this, the, what turns into Lawrence of Arabia looking. Such a big mistake, man. Such a big mistake to save 40 grams. I thought, anyway, I'm, I'm heading southbound, so the, the sun is going to be in my face. Mistake. Sometimes the sun moves and it's not on your face, so you're not directly going south and you want the protection that these things, this thing offers a bit wet now from the rain, still wet. It doesn't absorb much water, I love it. I dropped it in the lake once and the thing was like floating and I took it out and it was almost bone dry really. So that's another plus. Because today when I went to the glacier, uh, glacier, uh, glacier or whatever, I was wearing my mountain hoodie and on top of it I put this because the cap offers some protection from direct rain on your face so it's awesome and but anyway going back to the thing around here it would have protected me against all the bugs that destroyed my ears even wearing the head net that still got me on the ears big time here I got a big wound and so this thing around would have protected me big time against all the bugs and the sun. This t-shirt Cool Light from Icebreaker is awesome. If it gets soaking wet, it's, and the next morning it's gonna be dry. And you can just keep it on when it's soaking wet. It, it makes you feel warm and it will dry off on you before you even realize. It's just really a, a great uh, shirt or t-shirt, long sleeve t-shirt. I've used it in many of my hikes before and it's really nice. I have my base ledger, it's also all my merino stuff is from Icebreaker, it's not that they sponsor me or anything, I wish they did, um, it's just, uh, I don't know, my wife bought the Icebreaker stuff and she got me this and I'm very happy with it, why change? Um, so I have another long sleeve um, uh, t-shirt from Icebreaker, uh, it's the 200 grams 
so it's warmer than this one this is just for hiking the other one is like my dry clean clothes that I use for sleeping my underwear same thing you go and swim in the lake and if you keep it on you just like the moment you come out it's wet you just don't worry about it I don't even rinse it or squeeze it or anything I just put on my trousers go hiking before I realize I just forget that they were wet I just go hiking and they dry at some point so they're nice and the only issue I have with them is the durability in this uh, section here the insum they always start these are already almost wasted now uh, you can almost see, I mean you can see through I don't know if the camera will show but yeah you can see through here so durability is not good I have two more sleeping bags from Cumulus and this quilt I'm super happy with this it packs down to nothing it occupies no space in your backpack it provides enough warmth also it comes with the straps that you attach to the sleeping pad but I just I don't know how to get around those I just cannot get into the sleeping pad when the straps are attached and whatnot it's not for me so I don't use them but this gear is so awesome that you can just remove them so if you don't like them like me just leave them back at home so it's awesome what you do have is this attachment where you attach the straps and I think they were clever enough to think well maybe the guys that don't want to use the straps maybe they want to actually see turn the quilt into almost a sleeping bag because of this you, you can also fasten them and this is great because you do this and then it becomes around your body if you're a very big guy this is gonna be tight but I'm medium sized maybe a bit bigger here but medium size uh, 178 centimeters and I weighed 85 kilos just for reference and it fits me well and this is great it has also these two elastic bands here on the top so you can literally close it all the way or just adjust it so that you don't lose heat then in the bottom you have this zipper that is pretty long so it's a bit of a sleeping bag it doesn't get to your knees but almost and then the bottom you, you can just uh, with, with these two fasteners you can close it all the way like it is now you can open it you know if you're one of these like me that get too hot in the legs especially after all day hiking or your feet whatnot you can open this thing and so you'll cover all the way but the feet are not gonna be so cold you can another reason why I like quilts is like is because you can do this zip down and then you, you can use it more like a blanket so you can have weird positions in the tent if, if your tent is big enough and you are just on your own and you can you know stretch your legs here and there as opposed to being confined in the sleeping bag that I don't like so much so for that the quilt is great and I love it what else this bucket I carry this bucket with me no this bucket is just from here from the thing the stove is not my gear either I have a bunch of stuff here I think one very important thing when you talk about the Kunstleden is oh I have my mid layer from Arterix over there I'm too lazy to go and reach for it so initially I didn't like it when I tested it in the Scottish National Trail it was a long wet hike and the thing wouldn't dry off quickly it picked odor and I because of COVID I didn't have the chance to do laundries as often so really it picked up odor and it wasn't nice I wasn't happy with it but lately I took it in the Pennine Way, West Holland Way, African Tilt Way, uh, Kunstleden, I'm very happy with it. What I like is it breathes a lot. It's awesome if you want uh, another extra layer to keep you slightly warmer, but that breathes well and doesn't make you sweat. For that it's great. And so you have the extra warmth, but it breathes very well. It's not gonna make you damp or anything. I like that. And so the way I've been using it, if it was this cold wind on my face, uh, and it was cold like in the north I used this my rain jacket which is like very windproof and on top of it I put this mid layer that breathes very well so let the wind go through it it offers you certainly like significantly more warmth than not having it but it doesn't make you damp as I said so a mid layer like that active mid layer whichever you buy 
it's a good thing. I think things to look uh, for is like either the Patagonia that I think is even more breathable than this one or just in general this alpha whatever material is very breathable, it's quite good for active. If you do the Kunstleden, incredibly important, the first thing you need is your head net. This is C2 Summit, I love this one. If you go to Scotland, it's different business, but here with the mosquitoes, this is great. You must combine it with a hat or anything, especially those hat that covers you like a jungle hat that has around you the thing is good because then it put distance from the net and the mosquitoes and your ears right with the cap the mosquitoes will get to you through this they, they won't fly inside but they will get to you the way they get to you through the clothes it's the same right however in the face and all if you have a cap uh, you know they, they don't get to your face so that's great and also you know just the comfort of feeling that this is protecting you then this is a must it weighs nothing i don't think it's very um, costly like it's cheap i think i would actually if, if i had to come back here in july which i never want to do in my life even if you pay me i would carry two of them i have two of them i have the scottish one for mitches and this i was so traumatized with the scottish mitches that um, i always bring with me my my um, smidges uh, net so this head net is specific for mitches just in case just in bloody case if you don't bring that because you don't really need it here in the consulate just bring two of these really imagine you lose one imagine you break it because it's fairly thin you have the other one so you love your life if you don't have this thing just drop off or something because i mean quit because i mean without this thing your life can be very miserable in the consulate in july so speaking of those I tested three mosquito products. This is the Miga, this is the Bushman, and there's another one smaller I don't have here with me. My wife took it because I wasn't using it. The best so far of all worlds to me is this Miga because it's roll on. So applying the thing is so much nicer because it's roll on. It's not oily. This and the other products are pretty oily, like real oily thing. This is not oily, so you know if, if you don't like your skin being oily, you know this is the way to go. Effectiveness against mosquitoes, I think this is pretty effective. Probably these two are the same. Maybe this one, this one has like a bigger, stronger reputation. I cannot tell you because the moment I got this, I use both of them. So I have both of them, double cover, whatever. And the only thing I can tell you is. Perhaps this one is slightly better repelling mosquitoes, but I heard that this one has 40% of active sub substance, whereas this one has 20%. I don't know if it's true. The only thing is, it's a spray, so you can spray yourself somehow, but you can also roll on your clothes, because another thing, just use it in your clothes, big time. You don't have to use it in your skin, no, no, just put on your t-shirt and spray the hell out of everything. Ask someone to do your bag, whatever be on the safe side of mosquitoes or nasty things can happen to you if i was to come back and choose i would always have this with me for sure and i actually think i would still carry both of them i'm not as extra weight and all if i must absolutely absolutely only carry one for mosquito repellency i think i would give the edge a small edge to the bushman and the awesome name compared to i mean who wants to buy mega Come on, Miga, Miga, Maiga, Migay, I don't know. It doesn't matter how you pronounce it, it's not awesome. Bushman, uh, is it a catchy name? Bushman? So you buy Bushman. Uh, another, another good thing about Bushman is that it doubles as a mosquito spray killer thing. So if you see a mosquito, you spray the hell out of it here and it kills it. it I, I've tested it. It kills. Sometimes they resist one blow if it doesn't get them well, so you have to blow them twice. But you cannot do this with you cannot do that with this one. But yeah, if you can get both of them and be on the safe side, if you're here in July, you want to be on the safe side, get both of them and be happy. My pot, cooking pot, every new titanium, 120, 25 grams. Really like it. I've used it for quite a while. It's expensive, yes. Is it good? Yes. So you 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 get what you pay for and this thing if you treat it well can last forever literally so you know it's going strong
Then I have I have a spork somewhere over there, you know, it's not important which one it is. The only thing to say here is in this hike I've been I changed a bit my behavior when, when it comes to the food and what I did is the food that I'm gonna use for my snacks because usually I have in the chest pot here my energy bars but I'm fed up with energy bars so I'm, I've been snacking more like cheese and bread this dry bread you can buy here or just sandwich bread so this is my dry bread this is my cheese and what I've been doing is anything that I may fancy for snacking cookies I just put it in a separate bag in the morning before I go or I just have it all ready for the next days, for the coming days. So what I do is I have the full of my food in the bottom, whatever, more inaccessible. And this thing, this guy goes right on the top. So when you stop for a break, for a snack, you open your backpack, you have everything you need for your snack, right? You don't have to start taking everything out to reach finally your food because it's heavy so it kind of will go towards the bottom of the backpack. So you have this guy on top and you're very happy about it. Here I usually pack my cup or mug, my burner, my coffee as well, although now I put it here because it doesn't matter, it's both are on top and easy to reach. And my wife was carrying milk powder I did some milk powder uh, initially, but um, I kind of like it. Now I have mixed feelings again. It doesn't matter. If I carry mi uh, milk powder, I will put it here in the bag, and that's it. C2 uh, Summit X Bowl or something falls like this. It's pretty nice. Especially if, if it doesn't get a hole like mine. I got a little hole here, so every time I had my oats, it was dripping a little bit. So that wasn't good. This is from my wife actually. So I created this little with, with um, bubble wrapping paper, this thing so that when I put it inside here, it, it's not metal to metal noise. So it doesn't make any noise with this. So that's the, this is my titanium uh, mag. I'm too lazy to get it out. And my MSR pocket rocket is inside. I always put them like this and inside, inside here with the coffee. So that's how I do it. And probably I'm forgetting something, my electronics, I will not look, power bank, trusty power bank, uh, negative um, temperatures, like below zero degrees, the thing held the charge, which is very important, happened in a penine way, the thing was operating at minus four degrees sometimes, negative four degrees Celsius, and it was going strong. So usually I carry the power bank, two cables, one for my phone, one for my power bank. So type C for the phone, this mini, whatever, I forgot type B or something for the power bank. I have one of these. This one has different plugs you can remove. So when I came to Sweden, I put this one, I forgot to call up for the UK one, so it's good. And it has four and it works very well it doesn't overheat even in very hot days the thing was charging like a champ and i touch it it didn't overheat it really surprised me and uh, i'll put the name on the screen but it seemed to be uh, good stuff so far so good i always put uh, one of these uh, little bags to absorb humidity that you can grab even in your summit to eat food they come with one of these so, you know, if you have anything, uh, any around in the house, just drop it in your electronics bag. And if I have another one, if I have had another one, I would have just dropped it in. And if it's, if you're gonna have a week of rain, then I think it helps. Um, and then the, the aid kit, just a bunch of different plasters. And what I do is combine. So I combine them if I have a blister, so I get the best from all worlds, so to say, so um, the famous complete things, it sometimes let you down and destroy your socks, um, sometimes they save your life, so I have them, I have uh, ibuprofen, I have this uh, tape, so if I need to secure some bandage or plasters, I have this tape, if you need to fix your running shoes, like I'm soon going to be doing, because uh, they're broken on these uh, sides, you have your tape too, the different plasters, so just make sure you have some that are very water resistant in a way that they don't peel off, they don't fall off your feet. 
During the day it's hot and sunny, so plasters keep falling and more blisters appear. Others that have cushion to them that are thicker, so you let's say you apply the compete that is thin and then you put the thicker one over the compete so you have the best from both worlds. That's why I combine, or well, that's how I combine my plasters. I also carry uh, some bandage, this big bandage thing, because you may need it too, you never know what's coming. Like really, like, I don't have many things in my aid kit, but I'm not like stingy when it comes to my aid kit. I'm not like, oh, I'm carrying too much weight thing, no. I have a stuff here that I may need. And if I need it, I'm happy to have it. Of course, depending on where you go hiking, like here in the Kunstleden, it's easier for you to have access to things, to um, like this sort of things in the huts. So maybe you don't have to be so self-sufficient, but if you're not hiking the Kunstleden, then maybe you need to reassess where you're going and how easily you will have access to anything you may need. And otherwise, just really, just bring it with you because shit happens and you want to be on the safe side i think i've covered everything and um, if i forget something too bad and um, i hope you enjoyed the video if you have questions just drop a comment in the section down below if you like the video destroy the mouse by giving me a thumbs up let me just head back the mouse to give me a like a super powerful thumbs up if you dislike the video i hope you didn't watch until now if you dislike it for, for Christ's sake, I hope you stop watching like way earlier. And if you wanna subscribe to my channel, just subscribe to my channel. It's my hobby and I, you know, I take it seriously and I try to create good content because obviously it represents me and I have high self-esteem, so I want my videos to be good. And, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. And that's it. Thanks for watching and see you on the trail.